There you go. Okay, well that. Should we is go back our... to the um the reviews? Yes, please let us. We must. I insist. Daywalt Fear Factory. Uh, actually, one of the most inventive people we have seen on this show for a long time. The directors Drew Daywalt and the channel is uh, youtubecom yep. Daywalt Fear Factory. And some people may be familiar with his work. He has a web series on Daily Motion called Camera Obscura. Ah, that's the same guy, is it? It's the same okay, guy. Great. But he, on his YouTube channel, is a series of short films that he makes. And we have a clip of... Well, this is one of them. It's called New, New Toy. Toy. I think yeah. we're going to show as much of it as we can because it's actually a great video. What the fuck do you want from me? There you go, new toy there on the Daywalt Fear Factory. Disturbing and amusing in equal measures. Uh, a really, really odd mix to pull off, but the guy managed it. Disturbing, funny, twisted, Very exciting. Twisted. Yeah. Uh, really well shot as well and nicely lit. I, I like his, I, I mean, I love this channel. And all, they all really last between one minute and ten minutes. Yeah. So they're all different lengths, but they're mostly very short. But they, but they work really well. He doesn't overplay anything. You know, he just gives you that little taste of a nightmare. Yeah. But he doesn't overplay. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't go out there and put gore in it or, you know, it doesn't go overboard. He's just like, just, this is it. This is enough to put a seed in your mind that you have to look at the corner outside the corner of your yeah. eye is there something hiding in the shadows it's and he does that really really well frighteningly creative it's just very very exciting um you just never see it coming you know i don't know how the guy's mind works but he's just a, a, a real i don't think i've ever said this word before actually but I, in on this context but mm. i think you know there's elements of genius in this uh, channel shall we take a look at another clip or Danny, can you hand me my phone? Danny, oh, I swear to God. <sighs> Hello? Hey, Rach, it's Danny. I'm sorry to wake you up, babe. I uh, couldn't sleep, so I took a walk. But I locked myself out. I didn't take my keys. Could you come around and unlock the door? What happens next? Keep watching to find out. But my goodness, that is a the, great the, one. The next shot, the next scene right after that clip is just brilliant. Let's not give anything no. away though. All I want to do, I, I really, I actually don't want to talk about these videos too much because we already showed pretty much the entire baby one, a uh, new toy. That one is called Bedfellows and I just want you guys to watch them because they are great, aren't they? And they really yeah. are, you know. Uh, YouTube.com slash Daywalt Fear Factory. And again, we will link you guys up uh, very soon on our Twitter page and on our website, so check that out. That actually, well, I love the black box TV, yeah. and I did say that was my favorite thing of the week, and I'm kind of veering now towards Daywalt, actually. No, I'm gonna stick with black box. <laughs> Is that your favorite thing of the week, though? Um, I, know, I really like Black Box, but I, I think Daywalt Fear Factory is, is really just That's your brilliant. selection, yeah. it's, okay. you know, it's but Like I said, it's just a very simple idea. It's just, there's yeah. one where it's like a, a young girl, she's playing with a Jack in the Box, you know, of course, you're expecting something to jump out, but it just comes out in a different way, and you need to watch it just to, just very to see. Put. Very really, nicely really put. It's really, really clever, yeah. and it's and again, it doesn't go overboard. Just it just plants a seed in your mind that something nasty is just about to happen. Yeah, very unsettling, but very enjoyable. They are unsettling. And, they are um, nightmares. They're like little mini nightmares. I have to say that for me, that is what horror is all about. It's more about ideas and and sort of a sense of unease and, and yes. And you know, imminent threat or unpleasantness, but something sort of undefined. It's not, in my opinion, it's not all about like blood and guts and and uh, you know slasher flicks and that sort of thing. It's actually more, uh, more cerebral. I think that's what I enjoy about horror. So this was a great channel for me. And there's another one called Doppelganger on his channel as well, but a young lady who's gets a call from her boyfriend saying, you know, don't trust what you see when you get home. You know, it's not me. And she gets doesn't understand what this message is about. She goes home, she sees her boyfriend there cooking lunch. Then she gets a call from her boyfriend saying, where are you? And she says, I'm at home. And it's like, hello. Hello, who's in front of her? 
Yeah. Very good. Watch Check it. Check it out. Unreserved clinks all round, I think. Cheers to Mr. Daywalk there. Check out his YouTube com, uh, YouTube channel, Elazar's channel of the week, I've no doubt, and certainly well up there for me. But next we've got um, a bit of Grindhouse. Which is a, a well, slight... I don't even know what that means, Elazar. Grindhouse. Did so... you not see the Grindhouse movies? No, I, I haven't seen them. I, I'm very ignorant Gr Grindhouse comes... is uh, it's like a, a genre of, of horror, really, of exploitation cinema. 1960s, 1970s, and it was like the kind of exploitation horror movies you would get at the drive-in cinema in America. I see. Well, so cheap and nasty I horror mean, movies. In you know, a way... Like lots of beautiful women, yeah. lots of running around and yeah. killers and, and, and blood and, you know... I mean, in a way, wouldn't you say that is the same of the, of the films that are around nowadays? You know, they're, they're sort of exploiting beautiful young people and... I mean, not exploiting them, because no. I'm sure they're getting handsomely rewarded financially. <laughs> but I mean, the films yeah, themselves, they're not made for sort of, you know, artistic, uh, like, you know, well, there's, that, there's that's no real what, worth that's what, that, that's what the exploitation means, really. You're mm. exploiting um, the fact that you're, the basic instincts of, you know, uh, you're, you're providing thrills and, and blood and oh, sex and nudity. That's the exploitation, okay. but not the exploitation of people. It's the exploitation of ideas and things. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And what better way to demonstrate this than a clip from the channel we're looking at now, uh, Catholic Cheerleaders for Satan. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> God's personal pep squad. Oh, girls, this is gonna be some fun. <laughs> Woo, yeah. it's hot. They packed their pom poms <laughs> for a retreat in the deep woods. Do I get anything other than potato chips from the gas station? <laughs> <laughs> you alright? Who's this? I was just asking Jana here if you guys happen to have any beer around. The tall ones. There we go, the Catholic cheerleaders for Satan. <laughs> I'm at a loss of words. What it? What is it? Is that a one? Okay, let's let's explain this one. This is um, a a web series. They are eight episodes in at the moment, and it's it's going to be connected to a feature film that's being made called The Hard Cut. Yeah. And in that feature film, a detective comes across a film called The, the Catholic Cheerleaders from Satan. Okay. So what the makers have done is said, well, let's actually make that. So it's a real film within their film. That's an interesting thing, because I had a similar idea um, based on the play that is mentioned in Hamlet, the name of which escapes me now. The right. Murder of Gonzago right. is the play they react to So you wanted to make Murder of Gonzago. I always thought that would be like a nice idea to make, but it may already exist, to be fair. I haven't looked into it too deeply. But uh, I think that is where the comparisons between Hamlet <laughs> and Catholic cheerleaders for Satan must end. Because, uh, as you say, very... Well, I'm, as I'm saying... Very little in the way of uh, quality acting. Very little in the way of quality filmmaking, really. I mean, well, can, I you can, defend, can you I can, defend I, this? I, I, I can defend this. Okay. Because the first episode didn't quite grip me. But by the time of the second episode, I was kind of like getting hooked onto it, actually. And I started watching the rest of the series quite quickly. Okay. I it mean, reminded me of the kind of films I would have watched as a teenager. Oh, sorry, it reminds me of the kind of films you would have made as a teenager, I think. Is that fair? <laughs> That's probably fair. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm quite jealous you got to make Well, yeah. fine. I mean, I... No, it's, okay. it, you know, it's, it's a group of young girls that go into the forest. Um, there's a group of three guys who are killers. Have a bit of a tussle with them. Mm. The girls get killed, but they get resurrected as sort of satanic babes. Yeah. And they, they get their revenge. Okay. And that is... What a lot of horror films are, and and they're just basically parodying that. It's a parody. Parodying. It's a spoof. Okay. Well, when you put it like that, I guess that makes it more understandable. But I, to be and to be fair, I didn't watch from the beginning, which may have been a mistake. But the episode that I tuned into, which is the first one that starts playing when you log on to their channel, YouTube.com/slash/creepy6films. Yes. Um, there was a lady talking about having her most private area bitten off. And, in a film? Uh, yeah, and I just thought I didn't really want to... Uh, I don't know, I, d I can't stand that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You can't stand the exploitation I... cinema? Well, no, yeah. I just can't stand ladies having their private areas bitten off. You know, it doesn't really well, appeal to I me. Suppose, no, well, I don't think it would appeal to anyone, really. But, you know, I oh. suppose 
I don't know who who bit it. Was a werewolf or something? I, I, I didn't stick around for too yeah, long do to find out. Are, do they do they decide what's best or not? They just I, go for whatever. They I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's but, another uh, subject. Well, let's get yeah, off that subject. Let's get, anyway, out, let's get out of there. A, not a pleasant discussion. It isn't, and for but for that reason, I can't clink it. Really? Well, I, I will because well, I I enjoyed it. I had fun, and that's at the end of the day what it's all about. That is what it's all about. And, Cheers uh, to the Catholic Church. It made me feel slightly nauseous, so I didn't enjoy it. Well, then perhaps uh, it works. Perhaps as, it works. As a piece of exploitation cinema, it made you feel uncomfortable. And that's isn't that it, what yeah, horror is all about? Whichever, whatever kind of subgenre of horror you're into, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, that's what. Horror is. That's it's what a, it all is. Yeah. Horror is a guttural, a guttural genre, I think. And okay. I think if if it doesn't move you in some kind of way, whether positive or negative, then it hasn't really worked as a horror film. Okay. And I think that applies to web series Fine. as well. Fine. Okay. So if you like that kind of thing, you will like that kind of thing. If you don't like that kind of thing, you won't like it. Guys, that is our review of Catholic Cheerleaders for Satan.